Hi, I'm Ryan Nichol, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today I want to talk about how do you know how much geometric compliance your mooring has? So what do we mean by geometric compliance? This is the uh, shape of the mooring it makes in the water column uh, for something like an oceanographic mooring um, that changes and, and, and moves through the water column when there's environmental forces from wind, currents, and waves. And the more kind of compliance you have, the more ability the mooring has to absorb these motions and forces and loads without the forces going uh, really, really high and, and causing components to break. Um, so how do you measure it and how do you know if it's good or not? I mean, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard to have an intuitive sense of what will happen. But um, ultimately, you do need to have a few kinds of components in your mooring to get this effect. You need to have something that gives some flotation and then something that gives some weight to make sort of an S shape in the water column. So I made up a, 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 a demonstrative mooring to kind of show this. Um, we have a Nexen CB650 buoy at the top, um, a very, very short section of chain just for help with stability of the buoy. And in this problem, we're looking at a water depth of 200 meters. This is just a, a made up problem to illustrate it, but we're looking at 200 meter water depth um, and a current of a half a meter per second at the surface tapering to zero at the seabed. Now, in these three different moorings, I've got a uh, Samson Amsteel blue rope. It's a little bit positively buoyant. Um, and a scope of one and a half, so there's more mooring line length than there is in the water. And the difference between all of these is this is just the float and the line going to the anchor here. So that's it, uh, just the line itself. So there's no, there's definitely no compliance, but what does that really mean in terms of the, the loads and the effects? Um, this has got a short section of uh, chain here to sort of provide a little bit of ballasting weight to hold things down, but the problem is it's missing some uh, any some kind of like flotation element here to give it that S shape. And yeah, the line is positively buoyant, but it's just it's just not buoyant enough to really cause that shape. So this final mooring, the only difference is um, in addition to that short section of chain, it's got a uh, 14 inch trawl float, so very tiny float. But we're going to see what kind of a difference it makes. Now, what I've done is. Um, this is the static deflection of all these moorings in the same current profile. Now we're using this as a starting point um, for the resulting uh, motions in a 7 meter significant wave height, 9 second period wave. So um, we just start playing all of these. Um, you'll see them all start to move here. Now it's visually kind of hard to see you know, exactly what's happening, but you can see some de deformation from the moorings start to move around. Things get a little bit more obvious when you start looking at a plot of the resulting tensions at the top. So here we have the line with nothing, uh, nothing of any kind of compliance in here, and it is really snappy. So uh, the line's going slack, you're getting some snap loads, um, almost uh, 5,000 newtons, 5 kilonewtons of load, um, and, and it repeatedly goes slack. So it's, it's really hard in the mooring. Those loads are pretty high. Um, it's, uh, uh, that's what we mean by there's no compliance. The, um, the mooring is getting pulled pretty, pretty taut as these big waves are, are uh, lifting the buoy up and, and slamming the system. Now, on the second mooring here, we have minimum compliance with a little bit of section of chain. And we kind of see like the peaks aren't quite as high, but it's still, you know, it's not really doing that much here. Um, now, this is the really interesting plot here. The only difference being, again, that 14-inch um, uh, float, really, really small float when you consider it's in 200 meters of water depth. And the loads are way better under control here. Now, there's a little bit of extra drift load in the system from how big those waves are, and we start to see the loads picking up as it's stretching out the mooring by the time you get to the end of the uh, analysis here. But um, the main point of this was to illustrate, um, it's hard to tell just by looking at a mooring how much compliance there is. Yeah, it's got an S shape, but you can see over time it's getting a bit stretched out here. Um, really what you want to be looking for is you've got something to kind of provide a bit of ballast on one end, and then the flotation is going to resist that current profile and those mean loads in the system. So, you know, we might go back and, and iterate on this design to give it a couple more floats here, maybe a little bit more weight here, and, and see what happens. It's especially useful to have tools like ProDSDS where you can make those changes really quickly in Oceanographic Designer and, and check the results. So uh, that's what I wanted to show in how you can kind of gauge, like, what do we mean by geometric compliance and, and what does it look like and how can you change it and, and measure it uh, for different mooring systems. 
Thanks for watching.